What's going on, boys and girls? So, we're getting ready to run another experiment. This week, I bought six cars. But I did something a little different because I keep hearing that you guys think that financing a car and putting it on Turo is the way to go. I have my doubts about that, but let's test it. So I bought five cars yesterday, one, six. I bought seven cars this week. Six of those cars I paid cash for. And uh, the seventh I financed. So I'm getting ready to run some more experiments. This is month number two of the car business experiment. So month number one, I did like $6,000 off of eight cars. So now I have seven more cars. So we will see what this does to the profits. Now, yesterday I had a really good day. I bought five cars for $41,000. And that's where I want to be. Uh, it took me a little time to get it dialed in because you make your money when you buy. You don't make your money when you sell. You make your money when you buy. And the first collection of cars is too expensive. Um, I got two Acras yesterday and three Camrys. And at an average cost of $8,200 per car, tax tagged out the door, I can rent these cars for six to seven months and make my money back. That's where I want to be. I don't want to be in, you know, like, a, there was a Porsche Cyan um, that I was looking at. It was 30 one thousand plus tax and tag it, it probably been like thirty four thousand I passed on that because as I run my numbers as I you know this like I said this is the second month of me doing this um, it is very important that I get a car that can pay for itself within a year now I'm conducting a lot of experiments because I don't care what anyone on YouTube tells you about a particular car. Matter of fact, if someone on YouTube tells you that a particular car does well on Turo or Hire Car, more than likely by the time you watch that video, that car will be saturated on the platform. It will be saturated. So what you need to do if you want to get in the car business is buy one to three cars and put them on the platform. Whatever you have, because the markets are different in every state. I was on Turo the other day and I was I was in New York. New York, they could get 2X the price that we could get for the same car. And they're renting in New York. They're renting like crazy in New York. So it really depends upon your market. It depends on where you are. But essentially, like this car that I bought, and let me tell you, I bought a Mercedes, and it was hell of expensive. I went ahead and went to, um, hold on a second. I didn't go to a credit union. I went to Chase, and I was just like, what kind of, car loan can I get? Just I wanted to apply for it. So I submitted my information and they gave me a limit of 200k for one car at 2.9%. So I was like one of the things that I, I, I know that I can get a I can get a supercar. You know, I can go out and get a supercar and put it on the platform. But I know that if I go out and bought a $200,000 car and put it on the rental platform, it would rent, but the numbers, the numbers just wouldn't work. I can already tell before I even did that because I've been doing a lot of research 
And, you know, if I was in Miami, maybe. If I was in Los Angeles, maybe. If I was in New York, maybe. But in Atlanta, no. There's a certain car that kind of works in Atlanta. Now, I'm going to give you, I bought a Mercedes SL 550. It's like $50,000 car. And the monthly payment on that bad boy is $600 per month. $600 per month. So, I'll be picking that up today and I will be listing it on Toro for $200 bucks a day and I'll be listing it on um, Hire Car for $150. And let's see where it goes. Let's see who rents that car. Because one of the things that I am finding out is you got folks on YouTube saying this and this. Like, uh, there was a guy, and I feel he puts out really good information because he's a businessman. His name is Stephen Marquette. And he, he had 14 cars, and he did 10000 I had eight cars, and I did 6000 And if I had moved my cars to hire car, I would have did 10,000 with eight cars. So what does this say? So he has cars that are not going out that much. I don't know what it is in Atlanta, but cheap cars, you, you go on the Toro platform and look, and you can see that really cheap, normal cars. In some, for, for some people they do well, for other folks they don't. Um, like I put the Acura up there, it did not go out once. It was at 40 bucks a day. So I don't know. And once again, we got to do, we got to conduct some more experiments. We got to conduct some more experiments because let me tell you where I'm going. I have like seven cars, about six. I have 15 cars now. So when I get to 20 cars, I'm going to buy a commercial insurance policy. And let me tell you, with Geico, you can only have nine cars on one policy. I found that out yesterday. And with State Farm, because essentially since I financed this Mercedes, I put it on my State Farm policy because I have to have 100% coverage. So, and let me go ahead and walk you through the, why I bought this Mercedes. I bought a car that if the experiment fails, I don't mind keeping. You know, I, I, only reason I financed this car, the only reason I did this was um, to test the theory. Because I keep hearing everyone like, finance a car, put it on Turo, finance a car. So we're going to get some real marketplace data points as soon as I pick up this car and put it on Turo and see what happens. And I, one of the reasons I went kind of crazy is so I can get three weeks of rental data because, you know, this is the 4th of June. So I can get a lot of data this month. And then August is really going to be my coming out month because I got 15 cars and more than likely I'm going to try to repeat what I did yesterday yesterday was a very good buying day i got good cars i got camrys i got some acras and this is the thing i know these acras will rent and one of the things is i'm testing uh instead of putting them up for 35 bucks a day i put them up for 45 to see if they would go out because uh, the nicer acras once they come in I'm raising the price to 50 bucks a day for those, for the, the big boy Acras. I'm not selling those because I bought those cars from the standpoint that a year from now, I want to sell them. So these are cars, and I bought a 2005 Acura and a 2008 Acura. And these cars, Acura really put out a really good product. Um, I mean, I was just like, they, they rode good, they were nice, and you know, I've never been in an Acura until I bought these, and I was like, these are really nice cars. So I'm going to bump them up to 50, so I'm gonna, you know, the BMW, like, the BMW went out and came back on hire car, 
the Range Rover got rid of it for a month rental. The second Range Rover, the girls had that car almost three weeks. The Porsche, the guys had that car almost three weeks. So what I'm hoping is for this other Range Rover to, you know, I got it at a hundred bucks. Cause like, once again, you, you gotta play around with pricing. You've gotta test some stuff. You gotta put some assumptions on there. <clears throat> but these Camrys, I got them cheap. I got them really cheap. So if I had to come down to 35 bucks a day, I still rent them out six, seven months and they're paid for. And that that's the key. I don't want to buy a car that, oh my God, he got hit by that dually. Uh, I don't want to get a car that's going to take two to three years to pay for itself. I don't want to be in that position. So uh, I put those five cars on hire car last night. They haven't populated and I got to call them. And th this is one of the things that you have to do. Hire car is going through some growing pains. Um, <clears throat> there, there, there's a lot that's going on with hire car. And I think they need to invest a little bit more in the website because essentially I'm logged on my desktop. I cannot see two of my cars that are rented and I'm logged in on my phone and I can see all of the cars. So it, it's, it's really, really strange. But so starting this weekend, uh, they should, I'm going to call them today and that should get the cars posted. And here's the thing that's funny. Hire car is for ride share Uber Lyft drivers, right? And you have to get uh, an inspection, which I'm going to try to do today because I picked up three cars yesterday and I'm going to pick up the other two today. Uh, I think I need a battery for the Range Rover. So I'm going to take that in to get that done. And we will see. We, we will see because... Like I said, I've never done this before, um, but you know, right now we're going through a lot of testing and I got, good Lord, I got two titles and I should, you know, the titles, I, I felt the titles would all come together, but they're not, they're like trickling in. But if the cars remain rented, on the hire car, I'm not pulling them off. It makes no sense because I'm making money. And um, right now, uh, my my sweet spot is under ten thousand. Preferably, I like to spend eight, eight. If I could stay at eight, eight eighty five hundred per car, that's good. That's really really good because. Um, I spent 19 for the Porsche. I spent 18 for the BMW. But here, here's another thing. Because I can rent those cars out for 70 bucks a day and they're rented, they're making the money, you know, they're they're all like they're making like twice the money. So it kind of works out and it kind of doesn't. But um one of the things that I am seeing here is you got to experiment. And if you wanted to start doing this business, I would start off with one to two paid off cars. I would not, you know, unless you just had the, you, you went out and bought a car and you financed the car and it didn't really work if you didn't mind keeping that car. Because if you go out and buy a car, and then you, it doesn't work, and you try to sell it, you're gonna take a loss. So that that's one issue with that. But, um, yeah. So, you know, the whole deal is, uh, I'll probably do a video of the cars once they get all five, like it's gonna be five, six, and then the Mercedes. Now, I got a convertible for a reason. It's summer. And in Georgia, 
and I got a hard top convertible. I did not get a soft top convertible. So I feel, and it's a two seater, it's a roaster. Um, I gotta admit, because the Acras are a little zippy. They're a little zippy. And the Camry is like, eh, you know, Camry. But this Mercedes is a car I can envision myself keeping and having. And what I will do if the higher car experiment fail is just go ahead and pay it off. And another reason that I didn't pay it off like it was $50,000, I'm going to up the budget for this project to 250. So I've spent 118 plus 41, 56. I have spent um, 160, like 170, about 170. So I still got some budget. And once I go ahead and get these cars um, from the ride share mechanic, get them inspected so that they can do them for Uber. And one of the things is DoorDash, Uber Eats is really, really popular. Really, really popular. So uh, that's how I'm advertising the Camrys. Like the Camrys, all of the Camrys are four cylinder and the Camry, which I paid eight thousand dollars, up until someone rented that Range Rover for a month, the Camry had made me the most money. But now it is um, the Range Rover that's made the most money. But so we will see. So uh, the way I'm going, I should have 20, 21, 22 cars by the end of the month. Um, and then this sets me on the stage to have 30 cars by December. Because if I buy two cars, I'll take the money that the cars earn and buy two more. I take the money that the cars earn. You know, so if I can get 22 cars by this month, uh, June, August, two cars, September, two cars. October, two cars. November, two cars. Yeah, so that would put me at 30, 30 something cars by December. And right now I'm kind of running multiple experiments. Like this exper this Mercedes is an experiment. If the Mercedes does well, guess what? I'll buy another one. If it doesn't, then I will go, because right now the purchases yesterday are much in line with um, I'm gonna buy cars that I know people can afford because like, let me give you the math. Like this Acura, I got one Acura, it only has 120,000 miles on it. So let's say I rent it out and they get it up to 140. This Acura cost me 7,000, 7,200 bucks. So let's say I rent it out for a year and the car makes, let me see. I can do this really, really quickly. Um, let me just do this real quick. So let's go at $45 minus 25% times 30, $1,012 times seven months so in seven months that car will be paid for and I rent it out for a year that's going to be a profit of five thousand dollars on that car okay and then I turn around and I sell it on a buy here pay here lot I sell it cheaply and let's say give me a thousand dollars profit and then um, let's say 300 bucks a month, which would be $3,600 a year. So we do two years, 
the 7200 so I made eight thousand dollars so I've turned my seven thousand dollars into five seven eight so this car has made me thirteen thousand dollars between rental income and selling it in birth in payment income those numbers work for me those numbers work for me um, and one of the things that I've come to understand is um, I'm moving away from if you build a relationship with me because everyone wants to move to purchasing the car and rental income is like three to four times what payment income would be so payment income isn't going to work for me right now but in the future once the rental income has paid the car off put a profit in my pocket then i have an asset that i can sell for even more money even if it has miles on it so like i said i'm very very excited about yesterday uh, i went to a dealer he had a lot of cars and i was like how much for five he gave me a little bitty break because right now dealers are struggling to buy inventory so yeah and what i'll probably do is do some like the, the Mercedes, I, I've, I've never been, quote, a Mercedes kind of guy because I've never actually, I think I've ridden in a few older ones, but I've never, like, this, this, this bad boy is nice. I can see myself sporting that. And that's what will happen because, fun fact, when I was buying the portion of this, I was looking for an M4 convertible and I just couldn't find one and I couldn't get the price that I wanted, so I didn't buy it. So, if this doesn't work, I got myself a convertible. And one of the reasons that I did not use the money from the budget is more cars equals more money. You know, if this Mercedes plan works, like, if it goes out and stays out in, let's say, this car, the payment is 600 That That, that hurts my little heart. Um... Let's say the car does four or 5,000 a month. At that point, I would go out and get another luxury car and put it on Turo. If it doesn't, I will take the money. Cause see, I got, I got directions I gotta go in. And also one of the reasons I'm aiming for 2022 cars, and let me tell you why I won't do this. With Turo, Turo has a commercial host program where you can if you have your own insurance you can put it on the on the platform and get 92 percent and with higher card the highest tier is 85 percent now doesn't really sound like a big difference but when you multiply this over a lot of cars it's quite significant in earnings it is very very significant so once i get to 20 and why 20 when you get commercial insurance, and it's very hard for a new car rental place to get commercial insurance because we've had clowns who went out and bought Lamborghinis and rented them out. And then when they tried to resell them to buy other stuff because the cars had so many miles on them, they could not sell them for what they owed. So they would wreck the cars to get the insurance money. So this is one of the reasons it's so hard. So I've actually got um, probably two options to get the, um, but I'm gonna get the cars because essentially once I get the commercial insurance, it's just gonna be e easier. Cause right now I'm at a point, every time I buy a car, I have to call up Geico for them to put the cars on the policy. I can't add them on the app anymore. I have to call them and it's usually like 30 40 minutes so once i get the commercial policy and th this is something else too once i get the commercial policy i'm not limited to toro or hire car i can put an ad on facebook marketplace i can put an ad wherever i don't know where i'm going to put it yet i don't know where i'm going to put the ads yet but at that point i can create my own rental program and have people pay me through square and rent out cars so i can kind of push you know my rentals 
Like I can put an ad on Craigslist, like, hey, you're doing Uber, you're doing DoorDash. I have a car that you can um, use for that. <laughs> Give me 250 a week. And, um, you know, I can start running a lot of different experiments because he here's the thing. <laughs> Until you actually buy a car and put it on the platform, you're not going to know. You're not going to know. And this is a, one of the fundamental things that I keep telling you guys. You have to get in the marketplace to get real marketplace data. And like I said, I spent $50,000 on the Mercedes as a test. I don't really know what's going to happen. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. But essentially, my exit plan is I'll just keep that car and I'll just have three cars. That's my exit plan. And then I, that money, I didn't want to spend because essentially, when you're dealing with my budget, I want to get as many cars. Like, let's go ahead and say I reshuffle the fleet. Let's say I sell the Acras and I do what I did. If I can get five cars for 41,000 my $250,000 budget gets me almost 30 cars if I reshuffle the fleet and let's go ahead and look at that 30 cars at 45 minus 15% times 30 it's $34,000 a month at $45 a day. It's $34,000 a month. So <clears throat> what does that mean? It gives me $34,000 and I can go out and buy four more cars. So we move up to four cars a month and then we move up to five cars a month because at that number, because four cars will give me the income the next month to buy five cars. And five cars will give me the income the next month to buy six cars. And once we start getting to a revenue position where we can buy 10 cars a month, that's a game changer. 10 cars a month, because what happens with my commercial insurance is my risk target, because my risk exposure. Let's say you have a commercial insurance and you have three cars and you have one total loss. That's 30% of your fleet. I got 40 cars and I have three claims. That is like less than 10%, that's like 5% of my, no, not even 5% of my fleet. So the insurance company is like, okay, and with me adding new cars each month, my risk exposure, it keeps expanding because the more cars I have on the commercial insurance policy, the more claims I can make and not be at risk of being, um, they won't renew my policy because essentially at the end of the day, they want to know, can we make money off this person? So with me buying 10 cars a month, once we get to 10, you know, where the revenue gets to 10 cars a month, that is a game changer. That that open, that's a game changer because essentially what it does is it moves me to a position where I get a car, I get 10 cars, and then I buy them right. And then seven months later, the cars are paid for and I rent them for a year. So what'll happen is each month I'll like put, I'll decommission some cars out the fleet and sell them and the buy here, pay here. So once I get to 10, then I can move up to 20 and then I can move up to 30 cars a month. So I will have, at that point, I'll be able to put 30 cars on my buy here, pay here lot each month, sell those cars, and then I have the revenue to buy 30 cars every month and just create this cycle. So we may get the 30 cars, we may get the 40 cars, we may get the 50 cars. We get the 50 cars, the numbers on that are sick. And um, I'm gonna do another video talking about, I figured out why so many dealers are doing Highline because all of the Highline dealers are not having the issues that the budget dealers are having at auction. It's the similar thing with real estate. Like right now, if you're trying to buy a house under 400,000, you're in a dog fight. But in my neighborhood, there's still deals. 
I saw a house that was going for 1.4. They dropped the price 100,000. It's now 1.3. So there's still deals as you move up the pricing ladder, there's deals. So these guys who are selling the Mercedes, the Porsche, the BMWs, the Austin Martins, they have a lot more wiggle room because that market hasn't been disturbed like the lower segment of the market. Because I want you to think of an economic pyramid. You've got rich folks at the top, and you got the poor people at the bottom. The bottom is wide, it's very, very wide. It's wide and deep. As you go up the pyramid, it gets less and less people. So I figure, because I, I went to one place, and I'm probably gonna do a walk around review. It's a huge dealership and all they sell are Range Rovers, BMWs. And I feel that they probably have 150 cars, like literally three to $4 million worth of inventory on the lot right now. So yeah, you know, it's, it's very interesting. But that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.